Paul Halayim La Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah Ba'ashem Rakaq Kadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. This is the brother Tezerah Law, back with another lesson that's going to be titled "Skin Color in the Holy Bible." So, um, in the um, how do I put this? In the church houses and pretty much a lot of religions about the Holy Bible try to preach that white is right. Black is whack. I believe it's the Jehovah Witnesses that says something about having dark skin is a curse or someone was cursed with it or it's a, something along those lines. I know it has something to do with Jehovah Witnesses. And what else? Um, Esau, Edom pretending to be the people of the Lord. They painted that white is superior have a pale skin is superior, blah, 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 dark skin is inferior, etc., etc., and now that the Holy Scriptures compares the Lord and the Israelites and so on and so forth as dark skin, woolly hair individuals, they're getting butt hurt, and the Scripture paints people with pale skin as actually legitimately being a curse and getting even more butt hurt, all right? So I'm gonna just dive into um just just a few nothing major, all right. I want to break this into two parts just to keep the video short, all right. This is Acts 13 and 1. Now there was in the church that was in Antioch. Antioch is a Greek city, I believe. Certain prophets and teachers, as as Barnabas and Simon, that was called Niger, all right. So this Israelite named Simon was called Niger, okay? Now, when you go into the Strongs of the word Niger, it means, let's just play it. Strongs G, 3526, Niger, Niger. That's how it's pronounced, all right? And it means black. Surname of the prophet Simon. So Simon was a dark skinned individual, a so called black man. And you go into the strong definitions of Niger, it means a Christian, okay? So, sh shocker, am I right? <laughs> For you people that don't know the Holy Scriptures, man, and don't know who wrote the Bible, right? Do people understand that the Israelites wrote the Bible, alright? For Israelites, okay? The Holy Scriptures is only. For the Israelites. Let me just prove that. Psalms 147 and 19. He sheweth his word. Hold on. Let me just go to the whole thing. So you can read it. Psalms 147 and 19. He sheweth his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments. They have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. So that proves right then and there, it the the Holy Scriptures was written by Israelites for Israelites. Okay, now um Jeremiah fourteen and two, Jeremiah fourteen and two, Judah mourneth right. That's the southern kingdom of Israel, and the gates thereof languish. And gates represents the the ones at the top, the nobles that's running things. All right, therefore therefore languish. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. And yeah, that time right here was a very bad time for the Israelites, okay? And uh, going to the Strongs, or where it says black, okay? And it's Qadar. Maybe pronouncing that wrong. Let's just get it. Strongs H, 6937. Qadar. Qadar. It means to be dark. To mourn, blackish, darkened, all right? Going to the Strongs, all right? It says to be ashy, dark, colored by uh, implication, okay? You scroll down even more, and you go into, um, right here where it says, um, to be dirty, dull, colored, okay? To be dark, dark colored as with clouds okay so the southern kingdom of israel 
are a dark people. They're as dark as the ground. And what color is the the ground? Different shades of brown, okay? So the Israelites are people of color, all right? And we and when you go into the scriptures, the Israelites are so called black people, man. The Southern Kingdom specifically, okay? You do have the Hispanics and the Native Americans, all right, that make up the Northern Kingdom of Israel. And contrary to popular belief, man, a lot of so-called Hispanics and Native Americans are dark-skinned people with woolly hair, okay? My grandfather, which is not related to me, all right? I'm a Judite. Um, he's a Native American, all right? And you look at him, I mean, just me being a so-called uh, black person, I can tell, all right, who's who, all right? You can just tell by the facial features and stuff, right? He looks like how you typically see a Native American, he looks like that, which is a darker complexion, like he has the high cheekbones or whatever, right, but he's got darker, a darker hue to him, to him, like he's darker than me, and he has pretty much the same hair texture, woolly hair, okay, nappy hair, um, what else would I, I want to get, let me go to, um, Revelations 1, okay, this is the description of the Lord, Heavenly Father, uh, Yahweh Shah, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's only begotten Son. And I'm, I'm coming to bring out the truth of the Holy Scriptures, because you Edomites, you so-called self-proclaimed white people, okay? Nobody started calling you white, because you're not white. You're so pale that you can see your blood vessels through your skin. You're red because you're Edomites. Genesis 25 and 25. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment. They called his name Esau. Esau, uh, the Hebrew word I believe is Adawan. I may be butchering that, so lucky on that. But it means to be wasted away because he, what? He didn't have no melanin. You eat him, his, uh, the, the rest of his nation was called Edom. Edom means red. All right. So what people on this planet control the world, right? Because the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, right? Job 9 and 24. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And who is mentioned to be the wicked in the Holy Scriptures? This is who's mentioned to be the wicked, right? There's actually a nation that's the wicked, okay? Legitimately. Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness. So the wicked are the Edomites. Job 9 Job nine twenty four just said the earth was given to the hand of the wicked. All right. Now, when you go into the word Edom, just means red, okay? Red. The Edomites are red people, all right? And they're wicked. And they control the earth. Who does that sound like? Esau, Edom, we already know who you are, man. You line up perfectly to a T. You line up just as good as us lining up as the Israelites, man. You, 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 you're the cat's out the bag, all right? The cat's out the bag. And we're gonna, we're gonna destroy you, all right? We're going to utterly destroy you, okay? Way worse than you destroyed us. And then we're going to put you in chains and put you in slavery. And you're going to build up the kingdom of heaven for us, right? The place y'all thought y'all was going to go to and have fun. You're in your, your take. If you want to be truthful, you're in your kingdom of heaven right now. Like, what's going on? You controlling the earth with the military might through the United States of America? This is the Edomite heaven, all right? But the true kingdom of heaven where the Israelites are controlling the earth and righteousness and truth, right? Under Yahweh Shai, under Yahweh, right? You're going to be slaves. And then after a thousand years, you're just going to be exterminated, all right? Revelations 1, and I'm going to start at 13. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and the girdle about the paths with a golden girdle, all right? So he has a garment down to the foot, and he has a golden girdle on, which is essentially a belt his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire now esau edom being butthurt don't want to uh accept the holy uh the truth of the holy bible 
was it gonna say, oh nope, 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 not woolly hair, nope, 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 just just white like wool. Just to keep it fast, I don't want to keep jumping back and forth, alright? Let me go to Daniel Seven. Daniel seven. Daniel seven and nine. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, right? So the most high Yahweh, right? The one who created all has woolly hair. And guess what? You go to Colossians. Colossians. Colossians one week fifteen. Colossians 1 and 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the first burn of every creature, all right? So, guess what? The Lord looks like his father, because he's the image of his father, all right? So, yes, he has woolly hair, and just going by this, right? Since uh, Yahweh Shai has white woolly hair, we can just assume, right? Assume, the assumption, that Yahweh has white woolly hair, right? We don't know. It, it just said pure wool, but... 10 times out of 10, right? White and woolly. But regardless, the Most High Yahweh and Yahweh Shai have woolly hair. Let's just continue the verse. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, like it's a fine brass, as if they burned in a uh, furnace. And I seen Edomite say um, that that it means that the, the brass was in the furnace. And you know how, like, when you burn, when you're burning something, and as it's burning, it gets real bright and white. They're saying that it's talking about as if it's burning, as in like present, not uh, uh not not present. Yeah, I mean present, but I don't know the exact phrase adjective I, you you could say I'm looking for. But they basically mean. They're basically saying as if this says as if it's burning in the furnace. They're trying to put it like that. And then they're trying to paint this comp uh this um narrative that they're they're white and they're not they're red and the scripture talks about people being pale which is a curse but let me just keep continue what I'm getting on so it says as if as if they burned in a furnace so the Lord has dark skinned feet right and be, if, if you if you have dark skinned feet is he two tone no his whole body is gonna be dark skin but let me um trying to think so i'll just stay here yeah i'm gonna just stay here go over here and go to daniel right because daniel also saw yahweh shot right daniel six all right daniel six and ten no no daniel ten and six not six and ten no that's saying all right, Daniel 10 and 6, his body was like the, let me just go up a little bit. Daniel 10 and 5, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose linen was girded with a, was girded with the fine gold of Upaz. All right, this is Yahweh Shai. His body was also like the burl, so that garment he's wearing is the color of burl, right, which is a greenish color. And his face has the appearance of lightning, because he looks very powerful and shiny. And his eyes as lamps of fire, his eyes are, will be red with wine. And his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, okay? So his, it's talking about polished brass, polished, polished brass is the same as burnished brass. They're the same, they're synonyms, all right? So that means he's not talking about getting metal, all right? Esau Edom just making stuff up because they want to be superior. Getting metal and burning it, and as it's burning, it gets bright and white. It's not talking about that. It's talking about getting metal, burning it, and making it darker. Because that's what polished and burnished brass is, okay? And just to clarify, right, that um, polished brass and burnished brass are the same word, like, you know? Going to the Strong's where it says polished and 
actually that's talking about something else so let me do let me just go to the actual verse so we can get the actual context of the verse okay and 10 and 6 so you go into the strongs where it says polished brass and it says burnished okay top is all right so the Most High Yahweh Shai and the Most High Yahweh in the Southern Kingdom of Israel are dark-skinned people. All right, it was right here in your face. You can deny it. You're denying Yahweh. You're not denying me. You're not denying anybody else. You're denying the Most High Yahweh. This is not twisting scriptures. This is a hundred percent the truth of the Bible. You, you Edomites have been spreading lies for hundreds of years, and now it's coming back. And it's hitting you ten times, hundred times harder. Now you're hurt. Your spirit is hurt. Okay? And guess what? Yahweh Shai, what, guess what Yahweh Shai said? He said his arms and his feet, or his hands and his feet, represents his whole body. Alright? So let me just get that scripture. I'm just, just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit you with multiple scriptures. Alright? <laughs> Alright? This is Luke. Luke. 24 and 39 Luke 24 and 39 behold my hands and my feet that is I myself handle me and see me for a spirit have not flesh and bones as you have as ye seen as ye see me have all right so yeah how was shy right how was I just said his arms and his feet is, is his flesh so if Daniel 10 and 6 revelations 1 and 15 or 14, it's lucky on that, says that his arms and his feet are the color of burnt brass, so a dark brown color, then Yahushua says his arms and his feet, or what was it, hands and his feet, represents his whole entire body, he's a dark skinned man with white woolly hair, and Yahweh as well, in Jeremiah 14 and 2, Proves without a shadow of a doubt that the southern kingdom of Israel are also dark skinned people, which they have to be. Yahweh Shai is a Judite from the tribe of Yahweh, the, aka Judah, right? So let me just, I'm gonna touch about a few more scriptures, then I'm gonna bounce out of here. I'm gonna hit you with part two tomorrow, or later, later today, later today. Exodus 4 and 6. And Yahweh said, Furthermore, to him, Put thine hand into thy bosom. Alright, this is Moses. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Biblical leprosy is when you lose your melanin. You know how, like, you go on Google, and you, like, like, look, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go on Google. Like, when you go on Google, and you type up leprosy, You type up leprosy, it doesn't give you the biblical biblical leprosy. As you can see, it's talking about getting just bumpy and all jacked up and all this crazy stuff. These people are not becoming paler. They're just their skin is like I can't even explain what's happening to their skin. Biblical leprosy is vitiligo. Maybe pronouncing that wrong. This is biblical leprosy. Vitiliago, vitiliago, right? Where you, where you get stripped of your melanin and you become pale. This is a curse. This is not a blessing. <laughs> this is not a blessing. Being losing melanin is leprosy, biblical leprosy. Okay, that's not a blessing. But who's who who has been hailing pale skin as a blessing and superior for a couple hundred years, and still trying to push that narrative to a certain degree now? Esau, Edom, the devil, all right? The cat's out the bag. And he said, this is Exodus 4 and 7, <clears throat> and he said, put thine hand to thy bosom again. And he put his hand to his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turning in his other flesh. So it went back to being melanated. Moses, right? Judite from the tribe of Levi, right? Um, The Levitical priest. Jeremiah 14 2. Dark-skinned man, all right? Now let me hit up numbers. After this, I'm gonna just 
head up out of here. Hit you with part two later, all right? It's number one. Let, let me double check on what I actually did on right here. Oh, yeah, I think it's number two. Wait, hold on. Yep, yep, number 12. Now, I'm going to read the whole thing, all right? I'm going to read it to, like, probably verse 11, okay? So you can understand the whole context of Numbers 12, what's happening, all right? The murmuring of Mir Miriam and Aaron. Miriam, these are the brothers and sisters of Moses. And Miriam, the brother in Salachia, the brother and sister of Moses. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman he hath married, for he hath married an Ethiopian woman. Woman, and they said, Have Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And Yahweh have heard it, and then Yahweh have heard it. Heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth, very humble, very righteous. And Yahweh spake suddenly unto Moses. And to Aaron and to Miriam, come out ye three into the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And Yahweh came down into the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. They both came forth. So I guess Yahweh is talking to Aaron and Miriam because they're trying to talk back. They're trying to get feisty, all right? And he said, this is verse 6, Numbers 12 and 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream my servant moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house all right with him will i speak my mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches in the similitude of yahweh shall he behold wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses all right so yahweh was putting them in check man like putting them in check like what you what what's talking against uh my servant all right putting them in check and then the anger of yahweh was kindled against him against them and he departed so yahweh was mad okay mad and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous and behold Miriam became leprous white as snow so she got completely stripped, all right, completely stripped of her melanin, okay, Com completely stripped. She became pale, pale, all right, and guess what? Let's keep reading, and this is Numbers 12 and, 12 and 10, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said, Aaron said to, unto Moses, Alas, my lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us where we have done foolishly and where we have sinned. Let her, let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed. Of the, of whom the flesh is half consumed. Was it? What's Esau's name? Wasted away? Huh? Ringing the bell? Huh? Let's keep reading. When he cometh out of his mother's womb. Because when you come out the womb, you're not completely 100% of your color. You Once you get older, you start getting that melanin, all right? When you come out the womb, you kind of look like an Edomite almost. Pale and red for the most part. So the scriptures is completely against. Esau Edom, man. Esau Edom, you're you're destroyed. You're crushed. You're hurt. You're hurt. I I dare. I promise you. Come come after. Come at me. I want I want you to try to debate me, because ultimately you're just going against Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Because I'm moving in the will and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. I'm I'm preaching the hundred percent truth of the Holy Scriptures, and the only reason I was able to achieve this ultimately, obviously, right. Yahweh by Hashem Shai, but through vessels, right? Great Millstone, Apostle Tahara on down, man. Double honors, double honors to the elders, Apostles of Great Millstone. 100% truth. I have yet, 
I have yet, I have yet to see anybody affiliated with Great Millstone, right? All 100% or anybody in Great Millstone to go off, man. We have yet to see it. And what I mean by go off, I mean preaching the truth. Now, sin and uh, living in sin and everything else, man, we're in the flesh, all right? That's going to happen, all right? And then I'm just, this is just going to conclude part one. Oh, Lime Law, you how about Shem, you know, Shai, by Shem, and Prophet Dash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, and peace and blessings to the elect. This is the brother Tezerah, Allah, Shalom.